Happy Monday. Happy, Happy Martin Luther King Jr. Day. You know, you always catch us in the middle of us visiting because we're always visiting. I mean, we're family. We literally it, are family. It's still happy good morning somewhere. True. You know what? It Thank is. you. I'm You're just right. Said it happy is. Good. Do we hear I'm, happy good morning. You know what? I'm life just going to go back to happy Monday, happy good morning, wherever you are. Thank you that we get to come into your home and encourage you. We have a packed, packed show today. We got to jump into it. Happy Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And oh my goodness, our producer Stephen found this quote from Martin Luther King Jr. Amazing, amazing quote. Honey, why don't you read it? Because I don't have my glasses. I still believe that standing up for the truth of God is the greatest thing in the world. This is the end of life. The end of life is not to be happy. The end of life is not to achieve pleasure and avoid pain. The end of life is to do oh, the oh. will of God come Stop. what That's may. Incredible. That is oh, like man. to do the will of God. Um, Steven, I need that. I'm going to put that on social media. <laughs> yeah, can he, can he, can can he grab the graphic that. after the show? Text me the slide. Isn't that amazing? amazing. That uh, is to just do the will, will of, God. of God. So yeah, oh gosh, so anyway. Um, you know, what a great honor um, to, I mean, nationally, people taking, you know, schools yes. are all, post office closed, the government's shutting down today to honor Martin Luther King Jr. But yeah, go online, research some of his other quotes and some of the sermons and things that he did. Just amazing, amazing man of God and uh, what a reconciler that uh, he was. So anyway, we wanted to honor him today. Isn't there like some states that don't celebrate though, which is weird, I like Arizona? Know. I don't know if they, oh, really? Yeah. Is that but new? They don't, they don't do uh, daylight yeah, savings time nothing. either, so they're kind of oh. uh, yeah. everything. Okay. <laughs> well, All right, this Wednesday coming up is National Thesaurus Day. Does anyone know what a thesaurus is? Oh, cool. I, yeah, I grew up with them. Well, so I did I. What's a, we, I have no clue to, what a thesaurus no. is. <laughs> we used to have to use them back in college, you know. It expands your vocabulary. Yes, it gives it you synonyms for different words. So, of course, being the Love Living Life show, Stephen had to take a little play on that and think, wait a minute, what would the synonyms be in the thesaurus for Love Living Life if we had to rename the show? Right. So, here you go, Pastor. See if you like any of these. Here's our first one. Instead of Love Living Life, it would be <laughs> Passionate Alive Time. Huh. Passionate Alive Pat. Time. That's time for Pat. Little, that's not bad. Yeah. <laughs> Acronym Pat. Time. Or would it be It'd number be two? Delight operative being. But uh, delight That's a little operative English being. proper. That's, That's a, interesting. That's a little bizarre. The operative Dobe. being. Yeah. I'm not, <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't really like that. One. All right. Number three. Here's our third lovely living life thesaurus synonym. Appreciate breathing existence. <laughs> oh, those what? are horrible. Okay, so here Those are horrible. Here's okay, you know what? We oh, just man. thank God that he breathes through us every single day. Welcome to we Appreciate, appreciate Breathing Existence. <laughs> All right, so strange. it's a good thing the source is only one day because then we can just be love living life for oh. the rest of the year. Here would so be a question for Stephen before we go move on. Is that a new the source from now or is that one that was like 10 years ago because if it's a 10 year old one that's weird if it's a new one yeah i would see why they say operative like being that. i don't know anyway. Not an all right so it's, okay. it's love living life to everyone else okay. <laughs> moving right along wednesday uh, this week a big big day it is national winnie the pooh oh, what come on yes winnie no the pooh way. is being recognized nationally <laughs> Who doesn't love that? Hold on. So well, here's what's crazy. Mickey Mouse don't get a national day. He doesn't deserve it. Although I do feel like Winnie the Pooh is robbed of love. Oh. Everyone forgets about Winnie. Not us. Uh, not, not here us. on Love Living Life. We love Winnie the not Pooh. Us. Not on Love Living Life. Look at this. Here is Lori's. That is actually Lori's little Winnie the Pooh. And look at the book. Now, what does you that book that? say on it? Yeah. This is Lori's book as well. It's Winnie the Pooh's exercise book. And That's it our is own super little Christian fitness segment right That's there with incredible. Winnie the Pooh. Isn't he like so, chunky? <laughs> There's a little background. He eats a lot of honey. Are you going to start high out in with sugar? Them? <laughs> Do you want to tell them why? No, or, you. It's your Okay. Okay. Your so, day. <laughs> growing up, Winnie the Pooh was a big thing for me. And my best friend was Piglet, and I was Pooh. And that's how we talk to each other. I could call her on the phone right now and say, Piglet, and she'd go, Pooh. So anyway, I was Pooh, and she was Piglet, and we played it every day. That's, that's who we played. You would think and she would resent that name as she got older. 
You know what, like, though? It was so endearing for us. my pig friend. But she wasn't. <laughs> Hi, this is she was, she was Gee, this thanks. cute little tiny person like that a, I absolutely pig. loved. No, she was neat and tidy. <laughs> but I mean, If I interviewed 100 women and said, do you want the compliment of being called a pig? But they were pig and piglet. Yeah. Poo and piglet, totally con different yeah. connotation. Yeah. All right. Anyway, National anyway. Winnie the Pooh Day. Hi, Piglet. So hey, I encourage you to go back yes. and read Hi, some of those piglet. old books. Go watch some old Winnie the Pooh episodes. <laughs> Winnie was classic. Winnie the Pooh was classic. Yeah, I hope they remake them at some point in our life. I love As Winnie good, the because I know they've, they've kind of tried to turn Winnie the Pooh and his whole story into this stuff about people not being right. Don't do that. And Wait, don't really? read that. Don't even believe it. Because Winnie the Pooh is not good. right. Yeah, they're like, like, like he had stuff? no mental issues. And like Spoon has a mental problem? And Piglet. No, Eeyore he, has depression. That's about yeah, it. Yeah, because depressed. he was like, oh. That's anyway, I'm for noticing you. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good imitation. How can it's you a voice not, doing that. How can you not just love Winnie the Pooh and Piglet and He's Eeyore and all this? An owl with wisdom. I mean, so fun. Super cute He's a story. Chubby little cubby, all stuffed with fluff. Oh, we yeah, love, I love, love Winnie the Pooh. So anyway, Wednesday, celebrate <laughs> National Winnie the Pooh Day. And this January, this entire month is National Hobby Month. Entire month. So you get to celebrate your hobby, introduce other people to your hobby. So we have our thumbs up, thumbs down on some hobbies to see whether you like them or not. Crew, you're involved. Isaac, you're involved in this. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Here we go. Our first one, hobby. Do you give it a thumbs up or thumbs down? Golf. We've got a mixed feeling here. I like golf and I, I love I wish I had time to play golf. it. I don't have time to go, you know, I went to top golf and didn't enjoy it. That's didn't? so different, though, than just Golf's one of those ball. sports where you have to do good to keep liking it. Otherwise, it ain't worth it. That's I true. like the challenge. Like it's the one nice shot that keeps you going. That's exactly when you never right. get the nice shot, that's you don't true. want to keep that's going. That's absolutely true. And it, that's, <laughs> it's there's so much wins. finesse in it, you've got to got to practice. All right, our next one. What Quilting. I mean, um, do we get any thumbs up? Does anybody at, under no? 40 know what this is? Okay, I'm going to be on the fence. We don't get a single thumbs up for quilting. Quilting is a lost art. What about the old grandmas that used to quilt, spend their time That's quilting true. for the Christmas you go to present? Home goods. That's what we do. <laughs> Nobody cares. Don't buy it. No one cares, bud. So I, I mean, does that include needlepoint and crochet? People would crochet and... us like, oh, I spent five years making this. Thing. End up in the trash. <laughs> what am I supposed to do with it? Do you you know, liked it, not me. My sister-in-law is really good at it. She'll make scarves and anyway. Really? She's really no, she she's does. Really, really she does knitting. Knitting? Is that, That's I not quilting. Whatever. <laughs> quilting. Oh crochet. yeah, we're both confused. We're not even. <laughs> quilting is not knitting. No. I don't. Quilting's like a blanket. <laughs> yes. Like quilting. a rug. No, quilting is like a blanket where you take different pieces of fa fabric, sew them all together. Oh, that they can, can be, be cool. a message. They can be so little they're scripture very squares. Creative. Yes, and there are, yeah. are some straight from cute. the '30s. <laughs> and people used to eat Mary Jane uh, caramels. <laughs> <laughs> all right, moving right along. What's our next one? Geocaching. Okay, that's a new one for me. Does anyone me. even know Yo, what that is? Weird, Rob is excited about this. No, it's just weird. No, no, Wait, it's you, not. you have to hear him Here tell we you go. chase Pokemons or something? No, 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 we're no, not doing that. No. No, we no, no. are actually going geocaching for either this week Christian or next week fitness. for our Christian Fitness Walk Fit program. Yes. You can go to the geocaching yeah. website. You have to tune into Christian Fitness. We're going to walk you through a park. We're going to go geocaching, see what we find. And then you can give me a thumbs up. So right now, everybody, can, I need to Can you explain neutral. what it is? Yes. It's an outdoor recreational activity in which participants use a GPS receiver mm -hmm. and mobile device, OK, creeper, <laughs> and other navigation. It's not, and then crime techniques to hide and seek yes. containers. Yes. It's like treasure hunting. It's called geocaches? It's like treasure hunting. Pastor okay, James. Okay, I'm going to say, if I wanted to bomb someone, I know where to go. The geocaching world. No. How do you even trust that somebody put there for you? Well, what kind of world do we live in? You have to go online, and it, there's a little dot. You click on the dot, it tells you a little information about what might be there. Like, the name might be part of it. It'll say something about, like, Winnie. It'll say something about the Pooh honey jar. And it might be a little Winnie the Pooh in there as you're geocaching. Anyway, we'll find out next week when we go. Wait, can I just fitness. like go off just topic for one thing? I just watched the most miraculous thing. Pastor James just read all of that information from all the way across the room sitting on this couch. Come on. It's like, thank you, Jesus, eyes for eyes. Can I, I tell mean, you what's incredible? That is I incredible. went, I thought I had bad eyes. I had prescription years past. 
I went to the doctor last week. She said, you don't need any glasses. Wow. Come on. Thank you, Lord, for miracles. <laughs> yes. Gina. All right, our last one. Oh, this is going to be that? a crowd favorite. The last <laughs> hobby of the month is. is. Okay, really, guys? What is that? <laughs> what? Does Stephen not know what a hobby is? None of these even make sense. <laughs> Pigeon racing? Is that even legal? What is it? Is that cruelty to animals? What is it? Oh, man. It's what is the it? sport of releasing specialty trained <laughs> homing pigeons? Yes. Which they return to their homes yes. over a carefully measured distance. Right. The time it takes the arrival to cover the specified distance <laughs> is measured to determine the animal return to the highest speed. Wow. Is that amazing? So I could get my pigeon, let it go. <laughs> Nobody does Have this. it fly Nobody to does work this. wherever. No, we have lives. I'm so busy, I don't even have a regular hobby. Never mind pigeon <laughs> racing. All right, Carl, let the dove go. All right, so pigeon <laughs> racing, not the most popular thing we have. You know what's hobbies? Sports, friends. That's a hobby. That is That's a hobby. NFL football. I know. I've learned from you, and that was a segue. That was beautiful. Am I way doing you good or what? Right just in there. Right like in that. there. So tonight, here's a hobby. We're shooting in Clearwater, Florida, <laughs> right down the road from Raymond James Stadium or whatever stadium it's called now, where the Bucks play. And tonight, big, big, big playoff game. Huge. Against the Cowboys, and of course we have Tom Brady. I say we like I play for him. Hometown Brian, team. Brian Simmons was on the plane from Dallas last night coming here, all filled with jerseys for Cowboy fans. Oh, and really? Screaming, yeah. Oh, wow. We're hoping the Bucks win, just in case you're wondering. Here we go, quick story for you. This is why if you're on the fence on who to root for, here's why you need to root for the Bucks. This is a story from their punter doing a Bible study. Oh, that's right. This that's is cool. amazing. Yeah. How cool is this? So here you go. His name is Jake. Jake Camadra. Sorry, this is really tiny print. On their trip to Germany, he says, Glory to God in the highest from Matthew 6:33. He's posting scripture on his website. That is the Bucks punter, Jake. So there you go. If you're on the fence, Which come on. incredible because a couple weeks ago, he had probably the most incredible play ever by a punter. It was a botched yep. punt. He ran to the side. I don't know how he had enough time to throw it in the air and boot it, but it was probably the greatest play a punter's ever made. There Talk you go. about giving God Jake. glory. Yeah, good stuff. And we have our special guest today. Isaac, Since it is the here. Bucks. Isaac, come over here. My son, he's 10. He's he like, didn't do this as a costume. I didn't tell them that he was going to be here until yeah, we didn't know. he showed up. But he's going to the game today, so you got to look at this camera. This is your debut. Say hi to everyone. Yeah, him and Deborah going he's to the going game. He's going to the game. And you're a Bucks fan, so here's what we want to know. We want to know your prediction. Tell everybody at home what the prediction is today. Who's going to win and what's the final score going to be? Um, I'm pretty sure the Bucks are going to win. And it's going to be 1917. 1917. Yes. 17. A Bucks awesome, victory. Man. Thanks, how many, Isaac. How many Bucks games have you been to? Uh, three. Three. This is my third. This, this will be your third. Yeah. That's this so will cool. Be my third. Good job, buddy. All right, we love you. 1917. Well, I'll definitely That's be it. watching until I fall asleep, probably at halftime. I like, can't stay up that late. <laughs> we love Isaac. Oh, I'm going to feed amazing. you more chicken wings. So oh, stay yes. Away. So, anyway, root for the Bucks tonight. We need it. The community needs it. Oh, anyway, all right, this Saturday is a big, big, big day. It is National Hugging Day. Oh, Lord day. Jesus, I know that. Yes, <laughs> National Hugging Day. It has its yes, own. It's not a chance, it has buddy. has its own day. No, it doesn't. It's all about you. Pastor, this is the worst thing not ever. not quite really fond of hugging. I don't like them. I don't know. Last week at church, I need you to see what happened at our church last week. Watch this. What happened? Oh, Lord, you have the clip? <laughs> Gonna scare me a little bit, some of you. But laughing's fun, smiling feels good, I promise you. From a former cranky person, smiling feels good. I'm gonna tell you right now, I came down here, I've never, I only did side hugs before I came to Florida, and I'm like turning the right cheek into it. I'm embracing it. Pretty soon I'm gonna be full out frontal. I'm slowly, I'm, I'm not there. But I'm slowly getting there. You know what I mean? But right now you're getting a side turn. Before, you would just get the three pat on your shoulder. But we're, huh? <laughs> All right, Luke 6. Come on, man. We got to focus. Luke chapter 6. You guys are distracting. If you got it, say got it. You don't even know what verse. How do you have it? This is what I don't understand. 
Jacksonville is an amazing city that they're really having such an impact in. And now with Brazil, and it's just amazing how the Lord's doing this synergy thing. But they're heroes to us. We love them. And what a treat for you guys to hear from this morning. So come on up, Pastor Phil Ward. <laughs> That was so uncomfortable. So that was so good. So Pastor gets ex through explaining it. You know, in New York, you don't even look at people. You don't talk. You don't never, not even no hug at all. But nothing. You're you starting to become a Floridian. There's like a space that you guys are kind of too much in. But then it changes when you come here. That was my point. Yes. But I wasn't ready for a frontal hug. You're just getting a side hug. <laughs> Pastor I don't hug anyone. Pastor like Phil out of Jacksonville. No, you do. You, hug, you hug us. Side hug. Side hug. You give Barely. us side hugs. That's true. And you're like, come on. Yeah. You have to be family to get a side That's true. Hug. That's true. Yeah. I'm changing. Hey, People down here, unless you're like a, anyway. Pastor Debbie didn't hug either. And the other day, I went to meet with her, and I walk up to her, and she's like this. I'm like, oh, it's so oh, nice. So beautiful. <laughs> I, listen, I, I, I smile more since I moved yeah. to the South. <laughs> I talk to people a little bit more. I'm changing. Did you say y'all yet? Sometimes, yeah. He yeah. said it once, and I went, did Pastor James just say y'all in the middle of a sermon? I like it. <laughs> anyway, that. National Hugging Day on Saturday. Yes. I can't believe that one. That As its own day. you got Winnie the Pooh Day, <laughs> National Hugging Day. It's a big week. <laughs> All right. Uncomfortable. Our, our CTN Spotlight, we're going to run over here and show you a couple things on what we're doing on Christian Fitness. We launched the Walk oh, Fit man. Challenge. Like Been going now for only a week. One week into it. So if you watched last week's show, you know a little bit about it, but the Walk Fit Challenge is we're encouraging you to just be more active and preferably get into the Word while you're being more active. Go to, what, version. You can listen to the Bible on almost any download audio app. And we're encouraging you, if you join us for this 12 weeks, so I guess 11 weeks left, you can hear the whole New Testament in this time period. And that's only about an hour, an hour and a half or so a week, so it's, it's not really that hard to do. Um, but anyway, so yeah, here you go. He's got his phone on his sleeve. That's what we do. Lauren and I will walk and listen to the Bible and then we'll pause it and you know have a little Bible oh, study oh. and talk about it. Yeah. Oh wait, oh man, I forgot about that verse. Um, anyway, sign up. Please, please, please sign up. Three quick steps to sign up. Just go to, of course, you have to have a Fitbit or some kind of counter or every phone now has them, every Apple, Android. Or you could be weird like me and have both. Get a Garmin app, whatever it is. <laughs> then go to countit.com, sign up for the Christian Fitness Group. And there's the group invite code, and then join us here each week. I'm going to start talking about the leaderboard, who's in the lead, and here you go. Here's this is an old leaderboard. This blue is me. I think I've moved up into first or second because we uh, moved our office the other day. I got 19,000 steps yes. in one day. 19,000. So that's like the single leader day. Um, but anyway, our current leader. I talked to him this morning. I said, "How do you get so many steps?" And he averages, I want to say, 12 to 15,000 a day. He goes for a walk every morning, just spends time with the Lord for like an hour. And then in the evening, he and his wife go for a little walk. And then he That's walks awesome. during the day as well. He tries to get up every hour and at least take like 500 steps. So he's getting like 15,000 so steps a day. That's good. He said he feels better. He's doing better. Um, just amazing, amazing. Simple, simple as walking. Here's a couple of our testimonies that we've gotten just in this first week of the Walk Fit Challenge. We heard from, I believe it was Pippi, who's been a long time viewer. Love you, Pippi. I love living life. Today's virtual walk with y'all was so fun and so beautiful. Y'all have such a gorgeous place to walk. And, and that lake, God sure has decorated a beautiful earth for us. And I love that getting out to walk opens your eyes and ears to his beautiful creations all around us. I'm using the U version. Bible app to listen to the Bible as I walk. I am loving this challenge. Knee pain has kept me from working out, but I've seen I've been walking to gain steps for that challenge and it's helping my joints so much. I'm finding I am able to move more now. Love y'all. Pippi. That's awesome. <laughs> love y'all. We love Pippi. She's so encouraging. Yeah. And then also, you talked she talked about having a little pain, not being able to work out, but she's able to walk. We had somebody else come to us and said, Robert, I'm having physical issues with my ankle and I can't walk very well right now, but I want to participate in the challenge. Do you have any advice on how I can be more active? 
And that's a lot of issues with people, bad knees, bad ankles, you know, physical issues that they can't walk 10, 12,000 steps in a day. So we did this special show for this individual. This was Tony. But anyway, we did a special show for him that's going to air, I think, this week. Yes. And if you can't get out and walk, maybe you can try this. We have four keys that we're trying to do during this walk fit challenge that we want to get you healthier, want to get you stronger. So we're not just walking. We're actually working on flexibility. We're working on balance. We're working on strength and we're working on endurance. Good. Switch legs. So in addition to just trying to get more steps to be healthier, we're really trying to work on your overall health. I do a lot better if I just move a little bit. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it makes it harder when you laugh. Pull you off at the same so we're time. working our core by laughing and by moving around. That's true. <laughs> that right. is awesome. That's fine. Disclaimer, do not attempt that at home. Do not use an exercise ball without I getting it. We're worried about fell over. So I anyway. did fall over a couple times, but it is so much fun. But yeah, it was a half hour show. We got 500 steps in on the ball. That's awesome. That's right. how much activity we got just being on the ball. So you can still be active if you're having issues so with good. your knees, ankles, things like that. So anyway, join us for the Walk Fit Challenge. Oh, right, we've got some great news for you. It's our good news segment. Good news segment. Imagine that. We're going to go back and talk about football. Nice. <laughs> Since it is playoff time. But I'm sure you're familiar with uh, DeMar Hamlin, and he was the Oh, was he safety or cornerback that got had the heart attack on the on the field? Never seen anything like it in the NFL. Um, ambulance came out, resuscitated him. He was in the hospital for all that time, and um, something really special happened through that. Of course, people praying all across the country. Yeah. They raised millions and millions of dollars for his fund um, and his his philanthropy. But here's something really interesting. Um, can't remember what's his first Jake or what's his first name? Dan Orloff. Orlovsky. Orlovsky. Yeah, he's a former quarterback. Exactly. And he played for the, for the Bucks for a year. Oh, did he? Yeah. Played for the Lions. Thank you, Dan Orlovsky, and he played at the University of Connecticut. Did he? Imagine that. A U UConn grad. I know he was famous because he was in a playoff game, and he was back in the back of his end zone. And he ran out of bounds and caused it. Yeah. Let's not bring that up. Anyway, no. now he is a broadcaster. ESPN. For ESPN. Listen to this. Here's what he did live on air on ESPN. This is a little bit different. I heard, I've heard it all day, like thoughts and prayers. And you just heard Scherf and Jonathan Allen say, like, all we can do is pray for him. And I've heard the Buffalo Bills organization say that like, we believe in prayer. And maybe this is not the right thing to do, but I want it's just on my heart that I want to pray for it him. is. Damar Hamlin right, right, right now. Um, I'm going to do it out loud. I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going to bow my head, and I'm just going to pray for him. Um, God, we come to you in these moments that we don't understand, that are hard, uh, because we believe that your God and coming to you and praying to you um, has impact. We're, we're sad, we're angry, um, and we want answers, but some things are unanswerable. We just want to pray, truly come to you and pray for strength for Damar, for healing for Damar, for comfort for Damar to be with his family, to give them peace. If we didn't believe that prayer didn't work, we wouldn't ask this of you, God. Um, I believe in prayer. We believe in prayer. We lift up DeMar Hamlin's name in your name. Amen. 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 It's beautiful. Respectfully. That is awesome. That is awesome. That is great news. <laughs> So good news. Great even, even ESPN was uh, praying for DeMar. And I guess he was at the playoff game this weekend and went and saw the team. And uh, just, just a miraculous, miraculous recovery there. Love that. All right, well, let's get into our study. So we heard ESPN pray. I think we, we at least ought to get into our little red letter study. So follow along with us. Uh, we didn't get very far last week, so I just want to continue with last week. But what we're doing is we're reading only the words of Jesus, and we're going to do it in chronological order. So stay with us all year long. I don't know, it may take us a couple years to get through the New Testament. Who knows? But anyway. A lot um, of red letters. Yeah, last week we talked about the temptation, and we got through just the first temptation. So today I wanted to go to the second one, which would be Matthew 5 through 7, and we're studying out of the Passion Translation. Then the accuser transported Jesus to the holy city of Jerusalem and perched him at the highest point of the temple and said to him, If you're really God's son, jump and the angels will catch you. For it is written in the scriptures, He will command His angels to protect you and they will lift you up so that you won't even bruise your foot on a rock. Verse 7, Once again Jesus said to him, The scriptures say you must never put the Lord your God to a test. 
So good. Man. I mean, I think there's a few things we all can learn from that. I think one is that jumped out was the word, man. The word works. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually yesterday <laughs> we shared a scripture on where Paul said to Timothy, by the prophetic words that you had, use them as a weapon, you mm -hmm. know? The word of God, words that we've received, they really are weapons yeah. against the enemy. And what I love is Jesus wasn't tempted uh, where he just, you know, lived like nothing mattered. He held the word. And, and I believe as we face temptation in life, the word of God has to be Good. so much inside of us that it's what comes out to fight the devil. Because that is our weapon, right? It's the sword of the spirits, the word of God. And I love that Jesus... You know, and the beautiful thing about Jesus is they, you know, think about this. They were living the New Testament. Mm -hmm. They didn't have it. Right. <laughs> so he was reciting things that he had before using that. And how much more do we have now that we have the full word of God mm. where we can use it as a weapon? Yeah, so amazing, good. I love amazing, that. Amazing. I think what, yeah, I, I was reading all of this all over again. And I read this in the Passion Translation. And this is 4, verse 1, after the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the lonely wilderness in order to reveal his strength against the accuser by going through the ordeal of testing. And I thought about that. It's like, you have to know who you are yeah. because it is an accusation against who you are in Christ Jesus. Right. If you know the Lord and here the Holy Spirit lives in us, God lives in us. Yeah. And it's, it, he reveals who he is by, by the word, like Pastor James is saying. And then I started thinking about some of how the references were. So I went to Psalm 91, and in verse 3 it says, He will rescue you from every hidden trap of the enemy and will protect you from false accusation and any deadly curse. Amen. It's, you have to know who you are in Jesus. You have to know that you've been redeemed by the curse, that the blood he shed for you, it was for you. You have to understand that because every promise, healing, peace, comfort, his word, his strength, everything is in who he is in you. And when an accusation comes against you, it's because he wants to accuse you because he doesn't want you to remember who you are. Come on. So... I love that Jesus quotes the word. So what does the enemy do? The enemy takes him to the temple, which knowing Jesus is the cornerstone of the church, where does he take him? He takes him on top of the temple right. and says, throw yourself down. Crazy. I mean, yeah, <laughs> so in the natural, if you did that to us, you would think, oh my gosh, here I am on the temple. I know the Lord's going to rescue me. I know the Lord's going to save me. I'm going to go ahead and jump and watch the Lord rescue right. No, no, no. Jesus is like, I'm not falling for that. Pun intended. I'm not falling for that. <laughs> I'm going to quote the word because here's what the word said. Here's what the God is actually going to do in my life Thank and do in our lives. So as Pastor said, quote the word, quote the word. It is our sword and uh, don't be deceived. We love you so much. Thank you for joining us today on Love Living Life. We will see you next week. God bless. Go Bucks. Yeah.